Okay, thank you very much for coming and thanks Stephen for organizing that. We come to tackle, not to solve, a very small problem. To improve breathing. How many people here do not breathe? <laughs> How many people do breathe? <laughs> wow, I had a captured audience. So, can you... Oh, you gotta, you gotta move it yourself. So as I didn't, since I was sitting there, I didn't see who was the lady who didn't get a smartphone. It was Helen. Helen, I am sorry that that was the my person. My assumption is that everyone is going to get whether a tablet, a smartphone, any kind of a mobile device, and there is a huge trend of consumerization of medical devices. Medical devices used to be a thing that the doctor held, the nurse maybe did uh, some blood pressure, but today more and more people are using it and using it at home and accumulating the data. What, uh, so, what the problem that we saw that exists is that breathing actually a function that you can improve and the existing respiratory training and therapy devices have no technology in them, while the side of measurement, of analysis of respiratory function progresses with the digital uh, technology, the aspect of training and of uh, therapy is a standstill. So, because there, there is a void in the technology and the kind of... The people that we are addressing are two kind of people. People who have medical respiratory conditions, but also people who do not have a medical condition, people like that want to improve their respiratory function, and even athletes and high-end sport. And even though today there is a reimbursement for uh, respiratory therapy devices, some of the insurance companies do not want to reimburse because they claim that the people are using it while they are at the clinic, but when they are going to home, they are not continue to do it. And the respiratory muscles are like just any other muscle. If you don't train them, it goes back to zero. So this is a line I'm sure that some of you, or most of you are familiar, those are more or less the line of respiratory therapy or respiratory training devices <coughs> that exist today in the healthcare. Basic, basic from the, it's called incentive spirometer. I don't know if, how many of you are familiar. It doesn't have any incentive in it, and it does very little of spirometry. So, and uh, because, I was asked by Stephen to come here. I looked up at breathing for seniors especially because I wanted to learn more about this aspect. So shortness of breath and any other kind of respiratory issue is not an age-related thing if you do training like any other muscle training that you can do. So our vision is we created respirators right, based on three things. Science. First of all, for the first three months, we researched all the data that exists about the clinical validation of both medical and athletic and sport-related improvement through respiratory therapy and respiratory muscle therapy. And we got the data to validate what we are doing. We created a patent-pending technology which is very modular that can adapt the that measures, tracks, and creates the therapy based on each person need. And the psychology, like a lot of the people that talk to, oh, I have only one minute. <laughs> we see that the uh, behavior modification is based on, that. so one and a half minute of a video. That will video. Video, coming up. We have a strange, Time. Uh, okay. This guy. Oh, we're gonna need it. By the way, this is the prototype device that is working on a mobile, and you'll see functionality on the video. 
if you can put some sound, that would be great. Respirite is the first mobile connected digital device that provides real time respiratory muscle training. Respirite is a patent pending interactive system. It measures both inspiratory and expiratory breathing for highly accurate respiratory testing, tracking, and training. With 10 different levels of resistance breathing capacity, Respirite is an ideal way to enhance respiratory muscle fitness. Respirite is a data-driven biometric feedback system which helps optimize respiratory muscle resistance training and respiratory therapy. In healthcare, Respirite can be used in hospitals and at homes by caregivers and people with asthma, COPD, and other respiratory challenged patients. In sports, by training twice a day for 10 minutes, athletes such as runners, cyclists, and swimmers can experience improvement in endurance training after as little as three weeks of training. So as you can see, we added gamification. This, in this case, it's a game for kids Breathe that right they have to take right. to pick up the treasure. And the game is based on the respiratory profile. So each kid is getting the difficulty level that is based on their respiratory profile. And one of the other things that we are doing in clinical testing now, if kids, for it, kids hate to manage it. Kids who are with asthma in order to manage it better, they need to do measurement at least twice a day. If the kid will do the measurement twice a day, he'll get extra points. So I'm sure that a lot of kids will cheat the system by doing three, four, or five times a day mm -hmm. in order to get more points. My background, for a minute, it's much more in education and active training, so I understand much more of the field of how to entice the user to do it. And I got even one advice of how to do for seniors several games. One of them is to collect coins and then allow a slot machine usage of the coins in order to gain more money. <laughs> so basically my time is up and uh, I'm open to questions. Wonderful. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. I mean, we have something that's slightly different from the others, a bit more hardware uh, with its own complications, but you've had some experience with making hardware products in the past, right? Yes, I came from uh, many product development and I've created uh, products with plastic and electronics. I sold to a few companies, including Radio Shack, IBM, so I'm familiar with the product. Would you like this to be something that people can buy in uh, Target, or what are you thinking about the distribution? Well, we are now discussing uh, with a major Chinese company that wants to take it into 60 countries, and this device can be sold as an FDA-approved respiratory therapy device or a non-FDA respiratory training device. So I can play with the both of the field. It would be we are. It's still premature. I would love to see it at home. I would love to see it in a hospital and then given to patients at home because it's not something that you need to do in a hospital and then disregard it. There are a lot of clinical studies in major one in Australia that kids who are doing those kind of training can reduce their medication between 50 to 86 percent. The same kind of study is now being done in the UK. And uh, there are many studies that show that post-operative patients can reduce the readmissions and time of uh, recovery by utilizing respiratory training. Okay. So for that kind of application, do you have the device already FDA approved <coughs> or are you going to be seeking FDA approval? The way that we view it is they will create, a, I'm sorry, the question is whether the FDA has to approve the applications. No, that device that the person was. Yes, if, it, if I'm going to sell it as a respiratory therapy device and I want the uh, people to have reimbursement for it, I will have to go through the FDA process. Right now, it's not. right now it's not a... Not yet. It's a prototype stage and we are now in. All right. Very good. Well, Ben, thank you so much. Thank you.